Let's learn, you bell. I don't really know what I'm doing with the intro here. This you bell's kind of weird, and not in a bad way or anything. I just I don't know what to do with the theming. Just just start the episode. Ah! And welcome back to Let's Learn, Yugi Tube's least binary deck building show, I think. I'm Hardleg Joe, if in you didn't know, joined as always by my compatriot Critter, and Twitch Chat. Twitch Chat's down there posting emotes, being nice, being rascally little goofballs, but they're my rascally goofballs. And they're here today to help me learn you bell. The old GX era archetypes never been that great, but with some new support, it has rocketed into meta contention, with it currently being probably the best deck in Master Duel. And as the name of the show implies, we are going to be learning it. I currently have very little idea about how these work. Even though I've faced them several times, I've never sat down and, and read through these cards. I've just been kind of flying by the seat of my pants. So we're gonna rectify that today. I'm going to look over every single one of these cards, read them in detail, and use my years of Yu-Gi-Oh! experience to figure out how to build a U-Bell deck. Because whether or not you wanna play the deck yourself or know how to counter it, playing and building an archetype is probably the best way to do that. Before we get into things though, I wanna give a special thanks to this episode's sponsor, Cat Monarch who's just a patron. They're just a nice patron. They, they donated on the Patreon. They requested this episode. And I thought, yeah, you know, this will be pretty useful. I, I need to learn how to fight against you, Bell. So thanks to them for making me a little bit more powerful and providing this entertainment to you. Hopefully you'll enjoy it yourself. Anyway, without further ado, let's get our game on. All right, so whenever you're learning a new archetype, there's always one kind of card you want to start with. One in particular, which tends to unify an archetype's effects. Chat already knows what it is, you probably already know what, know what it is, and I will say it's especially true when it comes to building legacy support. Oftentimes, if you have an old series of cards that does stuff, and Konami wants to update it, the first thing they'll do is give it a big chonkin' field spell that does a whole bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and start with the Ubel Field Spell, Nightmare Throne. Nice art, you know, Ubel lounging. That chair is a bit big. Also, what what's that hole? What's that hole for? Someone someone live in there? Is Jade and Cyrus like hiding inside that hole? Anyway, this card says, when this card is activated, you can take one fiend monster with zero attack and defense from your deck and either add it to your hand or destroy it. Okay, we're not even gonna read the whole thing. We're gonna instantly add three of. That's usually the case with field spells, but it's especially the case with any card that searches, especially if it destroys from the deck. I'm going to assume, even if I didn't know these cards, that destroying them does something, because why else would they let you destroy a card from the deck? So this is like, this gets you started. This gets you everything. You absolutely wanna play any searching or consistency tools at three. In addition to that, it says once per turn, if a face-up U-Bell leaves the field by card effect, you can add to your hand one U-Bell or from your deck, graveyard, or banishment whose original level is one higher or one lower than those monsters. Then you can special summon it, ignoring its summoning conditions. You can only activate one Nightmare Throne per turn. All right, so a lot of interesting stuff going there. Obviously it searches, but as I said, this kind of gives you a hint as to uh, a lot of the qualities of the archetype. The fact that it doesn't specifically take you bell, but lets you add a fiend with zero attack and defense from your deck, kind of zeroes you in into the fact that maybe a lot of these cards won't necessarily say you bell in the title. I found these by searching you bell, and I'm sure a lot of them have you bell somewhere in the text. But you can also see just like right off the bat that most of them are notable for being zero attack fiends. This is not. This is a fiend with 3,000 attack, but the rest of them have zero attack. Um, that also means that if you're searching for more cards that might help out or have synergy with this deck, probably the first thing you would do is search for fiends that have zero attack and defense. In addition, you can tell that destruction is going to be a main theme here, not only because the field lets you destroy a card from the deck, but also because it, it gains additional effects, lets you summon more cards when something is destroyed. And also the fact that they talk about U-Bell monsters that are one level higher. I know originally there was U-Bell, and then they had a couple like different variants, which if you're noticing the levels appear to be one level higher. Um, they've got a new one which is exactly the same level, 
So that kind of also hints off that even before you read these cards, you know that you're probably going to play at least one of them, maybe even both of them, simply because they're the only U-Bell monsters that are one level higher or lower. All right, so once you've got the field spell out of the way, there's a couple different routes you can go. You can look at the newest cards, you can look at the extra deck, but I think in the case of legacy support, especially when that legacy support is built off of one particular monster, it's probably best to read that first. Most likely the rest of these cards are designed around the old qualifications that are on here. So let's see what the effect of the original U-Bell was first and its counterparts, uh, and then we'll see how the rest of this relates to it. Cannot be destroyed by battle. You take no battle damage from battles involving this card. Before damage calculation, if this face-up attack position card is targeted for attack, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attacking monster's attack. Once per turn, during your end phase, tribute one other monster or destroy this card. When this card is destroyed, except by its own effect, its owner can special summon one U-Bell dash terror incarnate from their hand, deck, or graveyard. All right, okay, so U-Bell does what I would call reflect damage. Uh, think of the Makankos, those are probably the newest cards that do this. Zero attack monsters that when they attack into something else, your opponent takes the damage instead of you. Except this is very weirdly worded and very outdated. It doesn't actually swap the battle damage and it doesn't work when U-Bell attacks. It only works when you attack it and then it inflicts damage via a card effect and then it has to tribute or be destroyed, and if it's destroyed by any other effect it summons. Yeah, very old card. I'm interested to see how they, they uh, salvage this with all the other effects. I can see the general play style and why everything has zero attack and defense, but I'm curious how that would work from there. Since this mentions another card specifically by name, the U-Bell Terror Incarnate, I figure we'll go ahead and just read that next, especially since we know we have ways to get into this because um, the Nightmare Throne, if this gets destroyed, you can bring this back. I'm pretty sure some of these, like, will destroy you, Bell, for you. So let's go ahead and check this out. It's a level 11 Fiend, also 0, zero and the following effect. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned by you, Bell. Cannot be destroyed by battle. You take no battle damage from attacks involving this card. Before damage calculation, if this attack position card is targeted for an attack, Inflict damage equal to the attacking monster's attack. Once per turn, during your end phase, destroy all other monsters on the field. When this face-up card leaves the field, you can special summon one U-Bell, the ultimate nightmare, from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Alright, so not really much of an upgrade. It does essentially the same thing, except it wipes the field during the end phase. Including your monsters, it just destroy all monsters, but I guess... If you destroy U-Bell and you have another copy of this, then, like, you just get two of them out, and Nightmare Throne will get you something else. Very interesting. And then, what was it? If this face-up card leaves the field, you can get Ultimate Nightmare, which is the third one. Was this one when it leaves the field? No, it has to be destroyed specifically. So I guess this one triggers more easily. I think if you Kaiju it, it would still um, summon the, the Ultimate Nightmare. So let's go ahead and check out the Ultimate Nightmare, which is, again, one level higher, still 0, zero Fiend, still Dark. Cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned by U-Bell Terror Incarnate. Can't be destroyed by battle, you take no battle damage. At the end of the damage step, if this face-up attack position card battled, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack and destroy that monster. All right, so we finally got something that deals reflect damage when it attacks. Granted, you have to go through quite a few steps to get up into this, but I can already tell that the field spell will probably make that a little bit easier. And then it also destroys the monster too, so it's a little bit of removal. Of course, unlike the other one, it has no floating, no protection or whatever. Although, let me check out Nightmare Throne again. Add to your hand one new bell that is a level higher or lower than special summon it ignoring its summoning conditions. Oh, okay. So if, if Ultimate Nightmare leaves the field, you can just summon Terror Incarnate. And if Terror Incarnate leaves the field, you could summon Ultimate Nightmare. You could basically just go back and forth between these two forever, as long as you have the field spell. So, you know, that's pretty neat. I think they make a pretty good argument, at least for now, for running all three. But we'll see. Now that we know how the original U-Bell worked, let's see how all these new cards did things. Uh, starting with the highest level monster, the Spirit of U-Bell. 
This is another Dark Fiend, level 10, 0, 0. So it's got the exact same stats as you, Bell. So if this is destroyed, you can't summon this and vice versa. You have to go up or down one. Cannot be destroyed by battle and you take no damage from battles involving this card. If this card is destroyed, special summon one of your Ubel that is banished or in your hand, deck, or graveyard. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, special summon this from your hand. If this card is special summoned, you can add to your hand or set one spell trap from your deck that mentions you bell. All right, so it's got essentially the same effect, except it doesn't it doesn't deal any of the damage. It does have a special summon condition, unlike the irregular you bell, but it relies on your opponent attacking, which is not great. It's very slow, easy to counter. Usually by the time your opponent's attacking, they have a bunch of monsters on board, usually including one that can like negate or something like that. So not a great thing, but it does search on summon. And if you destroy it from the deck with Nightmare Throne, you get out you bell. So it's worth at least playing one. Uh, maybe we'll do the other ones. If there's some other easier way to get this out, the fact that it searches like Nightmare Throne or pr presumably any of these other cards probably makes it worth it. Um, let me check that again. It has to mention specifically you bell. Does this mention? Yeah, this mentions you bell in quotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it searches any of these. The thing is though, we don't have a current way to get this out except for with Nightmare Throne. So for now, I'm going to leave it at one. Let's read the rest of these. If any of these give us some way to like get this out of the deck or destroy it from the deck or summon it from the deck or e even out of the hand without having to wait for battle, then this is probably going to be a three of because it's a searcher. But at the moment, I'm going to just keep it at one. All right, slight addendum. Chat has informed me that you can't actually search Nightmare Throne with Spirit of Ubel because it specifies a Ubel monster. So it's talking about the archetype you bell and not the card you bell. This has to specifically mention you bell, not a you bell monster, which um very complicated. I've been playing this game for a while and even I forget that's like a ruling sometimes. Uh, I don't know how new players are supposed to understand that. It would be nice if they just made like an archetype name. But you know what? That's that's just how the cookie crumbles. I'm guessing the rest of these are searchable though. It says a Ubel monster or mentions Ubel. Okay, so that's talking about the, the monster itself. Add one Ubel or a card that mentions it. Okay. Special summon one of your Ubel monsters if you control Ubel. Okay, so just, okay, so the rest of these are searchable. It's just the Nightmare Throne that isn't. Good to know. Weird ruling. <laughs> okay, moving on to our next highest monster, something I've never actually seen before playing on the ladder Geist Grinder Golem. A Dark Fiend that has 3,000 attack, 300 defense, and is level 8. The only monster in the archetype with any attack. Let's see what it does. You can only special summon Geist Grinder Golem once per turn. You can reveal one U Bell in your hand, special summon this to your opponent's field, then you can special summon the revealed monster to your field. Once per turn, during damage calculation, if this battles a U Bell monster, your opponent gains 3,000 life points. If you special summon you bell while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this to your opponent's field. All right, interesting. So if you have any you bell in hand and this, it allows you to give your opponent this and then summon these. You don't normally want to give your opponent a monster. Um, I, I get what they're trying to go for here, right? Like it has 3,000 attack, so if it rams into you bell, they take a lot of damage. So far, we still don't have a way to force them to attack or a way to like deal damage while attacking unless we get out ultimate nightmare specifically. This does get you bell onto the field, so maybe? I don't know, this is one of those things where if I was building this in a vacuum, if I'd only ever seen these cards in this builder, I would probably put three of this and three Spirit of Ubel in here because I feel like this gets everything out. Although this does say real quick, okay, so this doesn't ignore summoning conditions. So it cannot summon the bigger Ubels. It's just these two. And we don't know how many of the original Ubel we're playing. Maybe it's worth it if we're doing like three Spirit of Ubel to search 
and then three of the the geist grinder golem again it just feels a little outdated it's one of those things where like it's assuming that your opponent doesn't have any monsters on the field with any amount of attack so you would need to put something on their field, but most likely they're going to have something big. Uh, I'll keep it at three for now. We can remove the other two. I feel like you do want to play at least one, just in case your opponent is like, oh, they can't do anything if we have no attack. So just leave something with no attack. Maybe there's something else that we can summon outside of this that does have attack. Maybe there's Lynx. Um, neither of the extra deck monsters have any attack. But I feel like having at least one, just in case your opponent tries to stall you out, might be useful. But I've been wrong before. Alright, next up, let's just go down the line with the rest of the monsters. There's only two more left. Starting with Gruesome Grave Squirmer. A level 1, zero, 0 fiend, who is also dark. And if you control a fiend monster, quick effect, you can special summon this from your hand, then destroy one you bell or a monster that mentions it in your monster zone. You can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one fiend monster with 0-0 zero, zero from your hand or graveyard, except for itself. You can only use each effect once per turn. Hmm. Alright, so it's an extender if you control a fiend monster. I guess we will have fiend monsters. We're, we're definitely going to have to look into other monsters in this because I feel like this is something that's good if we have more normal summons. At the moment, we have we have two. We're really gonna have to extend beyond the archetype to figure this out. And then it also assumes you already have a U-Bell in your monster zone. Granted, if you got the field spell, it's not too hard to put a U-Bell in your monster zone. At the moment, this feels like something that only extends once you already have like a pretty established board. And it is searchable with Nightmare Throne, so I think we're just gonna keep it at one for now. Maybe we'll put in two more. We'll see. Let's go on down the line to Sam Sarah D. Lotus. One Piece reference? Ooh, ah, possibly. There's another level one zero zero Dark Fiend, and you can tribute this card. Special summon one U Bell monster from your deck. All right, well, there we go. Now we have a way to get Spirit of U Bell out. And this searches this. And now that we're summoning that, I'm still not quite sure about that, but it gets out Spirit of Ubel, and then this searches any of these, so if any of these are good. Okay, what what else does this do? I, I was just, as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, we've got our, our Stratos, essentially. Better than Stratos, summons from the deck. Um, absolutely want to include three of anything that's, that's going to get you started like that. Especially since this, again, when summoned from the deck, just gets you something else. But in addition to that, during your opponent's turn, when a monster effect is activated while you control a U-Bell monster, quick effect, tribute this card, the activated effect becomes destroy one U-Bell on the field. During your end phase, if you control U-Bell and this card is in the graveyard, you can add this to your hand or special summon it. Wow, that just does a lot. So it's like a quick effect negate if you leave it on the field. Sure, it turns a monster in effect into destroy a U-Bell. This will summon U-Bell specifically, and U-Bell will summon these, and if you have Nightmare Throne, you could get bigger or smaller. Hmm. Okay, I, I'm starting to think that if nothing else, you probably want to play at least two of the original U-Bell. Um, not necessarily because it's good, it might be a little bricky, but if they, it sounds like if they banish it, you might have a little trouble. Although, let me read this again real quick. That is banished in the hand deck or graveyard. Oh, well, never mind. It can summon from anywhere. Maybe you do just need one. A little tricky, a little tricky indeed. It's really going to depend on these spell traps because now that we have this, this sort of uh, setup where, you know, the field spell gets you Lotus, Lotus gets you Spirit, Spirit gets you any one of these, how powerful these are are really going to establish how powerful the deck is. And I know that the deck is very powerful, because it's like one of the best decks, so one of these has got to do something. And I think I remember seeing this one the most. But let, let's go down the line. We'll start with Mature Chronicle. This is a continuous spell card. It says, each time a monster is special summoned, that is a Ubel monster, or mentions Ubel, place one Chronicle counter on this card. You can remove Chronicle counters from your field to activate one of these effects. Remove one, special summon you bell from your graveyard. Two, add a banished card to your hand. Three, banish a card from your deck. Four, destroy a card on the field. 
five, add super polymerization from your deck to your hand. Oh, oh, so you have a, a super poly searcher. Well, I guess we go ahead and put a super poly in there. Um, this is searchable because it mentions you, Bell. It doesn't seem like something that you'd want to play at three because other than super polymerization and maybe destroying one card on the field, the rest don't seem like they're that good of effects. Although it's any U Bell card or a card that mentions U Bell. So even summoning like a Grave Squirmer or a D Lotus, you can very easily get like at least two cards, maybe three on the field just by activating this. So we'll put that there and who knows, maybe if we have more room, put in more Super Polys, you know, just for fun. All right, next up we got Nightmare Pain, another continuous spell and just look at that art. You Bell coming in here like Simon Belmont with the whip. Just wacha! Die, monster! You don't belong in this world. During your main phase, you can destroy one dark monster in your hand or face up field, and if you do, add one U Bell or one card that mentions it from your deck to your hand, except for Nightmare Pain. You can only use this effect of Nightmare Pain once per turn. While you control U Bell, your opponent's monsters that can attack. Must attack you bell monsters. Your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from battles involving you bell monsters. Okay, one second. Yeah, I think we're putting this at three. This is another another kind of starter card. Let me look at that again. Destroy any dark monster in your hand or field to add a you bell or a card that mentions it. So it turns any of these starters into any of the other starters. If you blow up you bell, you get terror incarnate. If you open up spirit, then you get you bell. I think this is another thing for, yeah, we'll go ahead and put two you bell in there. Maybe even three if that's the case. Uh, I don't know. We have other ways to search it, but we could use that, then get Samsara D Lotus or get Gruesome Grave Swarmer. So we've got a lot of ways to get fiends on the field. What does this do again? It just destroys a you bell. It lets you get something else. This is kind of tricky. But yeah, I'm looking so much at like the consistency tools that I didn't notice this is also your win condition. This forces your opponent to attack into you bell and they take any battle damage you would have taken. So in the case of spirit of you bell, all right, so I was looking back and forth with this. I was like, huh, this says that your opponent takes any damage you would have taken with you bell monsters, but all the you bell monsters say you don't take any damage. But apparently this is another one of those weird rulings that even to, to someone like me who's played this game for years doesn't quite make any sense. Apparently, if you ignore the effect, they would have taken damage and therefore it reflects it back. So that means that, like, U Bell does double reflect damage. Like, if this is the only U Bell monster on the field, they have to attack this. So they're gonna deal whatever, like, damage equal to their attack. And then U Bell's effect is gonna trigger and inflict that battle damage back to them. So if you've got, like, a 4,000 monster, you're, you're basically dealing uh, 8,000 damage right there. And if you've got any of these other ones, yeah, I can see how this game could be be over really quick. But either way, yeah, I think you want to open this as much as possible. It's not quite as good a consistency tool as Nightmare Throne, but it still gets a lot of your plays started, and it makes the fact that you have all these big monsters, like, less bricky. Although I feel like you can still brick. I don't know. Either way, we've got one more card in the archetype, at least in the main deck. We'll check these out later. But let's go ahead and check out Eternal Favorite, the only trap card, and a continuous one at that. And look, U Bell's a meteor, I guess. U Bell destroyed the dinosaurs. Who knew? Once per turn, you can activate one of these effects, but you can only use each effect of Eternal Favorite once per turn. All right, that's kind of weird wording, but if I'm understanding this correctly, you've got the two bullet points. A copy of this trap can only use one of those per turn, but if you have two eternal favorites, then you can have one use the top effect and one use the bottom effect. Not sure if we'd want to play two of a continuous trap card, but we'll see. The effects are, one, special summon one of your U Bell monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, Neither player can activate cards or effects when that monster is summoned. Or two, if you control U Bell, U Bell specifically, discard one card and send this card to the graveyard. Fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from either field as material, including a U Bell. 
All right, seems pretty decent. I'm not sure you would want or need to use both effects in one turn. I guess it really depends on the fusion monsters, but I assume you want to play at least one of those. I mean, I'm going to play one of them. It's, it's one of those weird tech cards that, like, even if it's not necessarily great, the fact that it's searchable just gives us another target if we've already got everything else online. But, yeah, that just leaves us with the fusion monsters. And even though this is one I've seen a whole lot, and this was one I haven't seen at all, let's go and start with the higher level monster, because maybe it's got a cool effect. Maybe people just haven't put in the effort to summon it. We've got Yubel, the loving defender forever. Never forget! It's a level 12 fiend with 0-0. Zero, zero. And it takes one Ubel monster and one effect monsters on the field. One plus effect monsters on the field. So you can make this with any number of monsters. I guess if you've got super poly, you can just super poly everything away. I feel like especially in a mirror match, this might be really useful. If nothing else, just because it's removal. Anyway, its effect says, If this card is fusion summoned, you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each material used. You can only use this effect once per turn cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, and you take no battle damage from battles involving this card. At the end of the damage step, if this card battled an opponent's monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack, and if you do, banish that monster. All right, so it's pretty much just an upgrade for Ultimate Nightmare. It gets its effect when it attacks or gets attacked. It just battles in general, doesn't have to be attacked, and it banishes the card instead of destroying it. So it's also a counter to you, Bell. I think especially in the mirror match, being able to inflict that extra damage, you're doing at least a thousand, maybe upwards of like, I don't know, 3,000 or whatever. It's worth playing at one. And then finally, we've got Phantom of You Bell, another Dark Fiend, 0, zero level nine this time. And it takes one You Bell monster and one Fiend with zero attack and zero defense. Must be special summoned from your extra deck by shuffling the above cards from your hand, field, and or graveyard into the deck or extra deck. Cannot be used as fusion material, cannot be destroyed by battle, and you take no damage from battles involving this card. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you contribute this card, and the effect becomes your opponent destroys one new bell in their hand, deck, or field. You can only use this once per turn. All right, so this is the thing I'm familiar with. It has all the Ubel effects, but most notably, it's a disruption. I think it's actually the same effect as Samsara de Lotus, but this usually gets used as link material or something. All right, this is better. The other one, you have to have a Ubel on the field, but this lets you do it as long as you have a Ubel anywhere, in the deck, in your hand, doesn't matter. And yeah, if you're a little confused about the wording, this this really just is confusing wording the archetype. Weird rulings the archetype. When it says the effect becomes your opponent destroys one you bell, basically that effect gets transported onto the monster that's activating their effect. So it's like from your opponent's perspective, right? If they try to negate with Barone to floor, their Barone now says your opponent destroys a you bell. So it, it lets you, the, the wielder of Phantom of Ubel, destroy a Ubel in your deck instead of being negated. Very weird. I do like effect redirections instead of negates, but it's essentially just a negate, except you're going to plus on it because you'll destroy this and get Terror Incarnate or Ultimate Nightmare or Spirit of Ubel and then it'll trigger the field spell. Most notably, though, is just the fact that you can summon this by shuffling the cards into your extra deck. It must be special summoned by shuffling. I don't know if they've changed like problem solving card text. Uh, they, they used to have some cards that say like, you do not use polymerization. I don't know if that means you can't use super poly with this or if you can and I just haven't seen it used a whole lot. But it does seem like at least a two of, maybe even a three of just because it's so easy to access. Actually, no, you probably only need two because it's a Ubel monster and a fiend. So it can be used as either part, and you shuffle them back. So once you've got one into rotation, you can just shuffle the other one back to summon another copy. Oh wait, no, you can't, because it can't be used as fusion material. Okay, I'll, pro I'll probably use three of those. 
This just seems, it's just free. It's just like you're doing combos, and if you've got like a U-Bell and any of these in the graveyard, you just, you just shuffle them back. You just get those monsters back to get something else. But yeah, chat is telling me that you cannot use Poly or Super Poly with this. You have to summon it with its own effect. So that just leaves this as a one of. Maybe we'll put other targets for Super Poly. Maybe we'll play Super Poly at three. All right, so now that we've read every card in the archetype, next step is to fill in the deck with outside cards. And as I hinted earlier, I think the best place to start is looking at the stuff that Nightmare Throne can search. Those zero attack, zero defense fiend monsters. Fortunately, we can search those pretty easily here on YGO Omega. Which, by the way, if you're curious about what program this is, it's YGO Omega. You can, you can search it on Google. You should be able to find it pretty easily. They've got like a Discord. You can download it there. And using that, we can go to Monster Type. We can search by Fiend. And then where's the attack and defense values? Zero attack, zero defense. Oh wait, minimum, max, yeah, there we go. And then we'll have, that's all the ones that mention you, Bell. Here's all the zero attack fiends. There's three whole pages of them. Now, normally if you're doing this yourself, if you're new to the game and you really wanna learn some cards and you don't mind reading, I would say go ahead and just read through everything here, see what the hell we have access to. I mean, you probably want to ignore the Ixie monsters since those don't count, but the rest of these might all be possibilities. Uh, if you're more experienced, if you're trying to build a more competitive version of the deck, this is where you probably just go on Google and like search up U Bell decks and start seeing what what they have. But in this case, because I'm trying to learn it from scratch and because I like seeing what some like new cards coming out are, I'm gonna go ahead and spend the time to read over three pages of Fiends and see what we can get. And I'll come back once, uh, once I've figured it out. Ooh, -na -na -na. Okay, so after reading through all the zero attack fiends, we found some pretty good, pretty good options. You know, there's a couple things in here that might be fun. But I also found the thing that most decks were playing and after reading over all the fiends, I can see why they're playing it. Dark Beckoning Beast is a dark fiend with zero attack, zero defense. When it's normal summoned, you can add Uriah, Haman, or Raviel, or a card that specifically lists those from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. Uh, you can only use this once per turn. During your main phase, you can normal summon one fiend with zero attack and defense, in addition to your normal summon or set. So basically what this does is it searches out opening of the spirit gates. I did check all the cards that have Uriah in its name, and this is another one that just happens to have really good synergy with the rest of the U Bell deck. When this card is activated, add one Uriah, Haman, or Raviel, or a card that specifically lists it from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, discard one card, special summon one fiend with zero attack and defense from your graveyard. Once per turn, if you control a level 10 monster, add one continuous spell from your graveyard to your hand. So basically, what this does is create this neat little loop where this gets you into Dark Beckoning Beast, Dark Beckoning Beast gets you into this, this gets you a second normal summon of any of your lower level monsters, and yeah, simply because of that, I think we're gonna put another two Grave Squirmer in here. Oh, they're in the uh, side deck. Put a couple more in there simply because it's just an extra monster that we can get out or another card we can discard with opening of the spirit gates to then summon pretty much any of our zero attack fiends out of the graveyard. Just a way to get a whole bunch of material outside of your U-Bell shenanigans to make like links or, I don't know, potentially uh, rank one Ixies or something. And then more importantly, it's if you control a level 10, add a continuous spell from your graveyard. So, you know, Spirit of U-Bell is level 10, U-Bell is level 10. If you have either of these, this lets you get your win condition out of the graveyard or another copy of this. You can then, if you have extra copies of this, discard it to activate this. So it's just this neat little resource engine on top of everything else that you've already got. Now, in addition, like I said, I found a whole bunch of other zero attack fiends that I think might be useful, especially because they're so searchable. Um, Cap Shell is something that if you use it as um, Link material, you can draw one card. Battle Fader, just a funny little tech card to, to forestall if you get your board wiped. Double Resonator has a lot of potential because I mean, you could make level 11 Synchros, it's a tuner, but it also has the ability to target anything and make it a tuner. So if you have like two level 10s, you could maybe go into Zulkin or something. That would be funny. Um, Eater of Millions, just a neat little tech card, although it eats up your extra deck in order to summon. 
but I think probably the one that has the most potential, and the one I'm actually going to put in my deck is Goblin King. It says, while you control another fiend, monsters cannot attack this card, and this card's attack and defense become the number of fiends times a thousand. We had talked earlier about how one of the major problems with this deck is that you don't have any way to put damage on. Uh, you're, you're kind of relying on your opponent to put up monsters that you can attack into. So if they decide, okay, I'm not gonna play into the U-Bell, I'm just not gonna put any monsters up. This is something searchable that'll probably have 4,000 attack. And even if you're in a mirror match, they can't attack this while you have any other fiend on the field. So the idea of just having a, a normal summon that you could just plop down with a continuous effect that can't be redirected, that's going to easily have 3,000, 4,000 attack, uh, I think could be pretty useful. Now, as I said earlier in the intro, maybe, I normally say in the intro, you know, we're not going to be building the best U-Bell deck. I'm going into this blind. I haven't seen Goblin King. I assume there's a reason people don't play it. I assume there's a reason that people don't play Geist Grinder Golem. But as someone who's just going in with no other outside knowledge, who's just trying to build the best that he can after reading the cards, I'm gonna go ahead and try this. As always, I think people don't experiment enough in Yu-Gi-Oh! This is how you find out the really crazy tech cards. Nine times out of 10, not gonna do anything, not gonna be worth it. We'll come back on the second build and be like, yeah, that was awful, we'll take it out. But it's good to experiment, it's good to try some new stuff. And you know, once you've learned the deck, once you've got the basics down and you've built it yourself, you know how it works, that's the best time to then go look at deck profiles, at least in my opinion. Because I'll have a great understanding of everything and how it, how it um, interacts with each other. So that I'm watching someone doing a deck profile and they're like, oh, you just do this, this, and this. It's easier to keep track of everything. So for now, we're gonna be silly. We're just gonna do this. And to fill in the rest of the deck, I guess we're just gonna like, I don't know, Imperm? Sure, we'll do Imperm. We'll do, we'll do Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom seems like it hurts this. Maxi probably hurts it as well, but we've only got two slots left. And um, you know, I'm sick of Maxi. I don't wanna see Maxi, I'm kinda tired. So you know what, let's just do Called By. Let's just do Called By to get rid of the Maxi. We can also pull other stuff out of the graveyard. And then all that leaves us with really is the, the extra deck. We do have two, some level 10 monsters, so we could maybe make like some rank 10s go into some trains. We've got some level ones, so maybe some level one Ixies, but most likely we're just gonna be doing uh, Link shenanigans. And as I always say with the extra deck, outside of like specifically archetype cards, it can be pretty difficult for a newcomer to really understand what extra deck monsters to use because there's this huge big uh, toolbox of just all these available cards and you won't understand what's available or what fits in your deck until you've just played the game a lot and seen a bunch of the cards. So I won't really go through that process, I'll just use the magic of editing to go ahead and get some, some cards in there. Let's go ahead and hit him with the Wucha! There we go! Filling up the extra deck. Again, probably not the best. Uh, if I had to say things that you absolutely want to put in here, probably the, the Al Mirage. Um, this is something that's like a Link 1 you can make with a normal summoned monster that has a thousand or less attack. I can easily see a situation where like normal summon dark De beckoning beast and then you don't have any other fiend in the graveyard. You can put that in the graveyard with the Al Mirage and then just uh, use the spirit gates that you searched to discard something to summon this back out. And then that gives you access to make like SP Little Knight and you'll be making it with an extra deck monster so it'll get the banish. You can make Muckracker which can then um, get another fiend out of the graveyard. You can make cross sheep, so if you have the ability to make the fusion, you can summon something else out. We got a couple um, Link 4s here that'll probably just be generically useful. I'm playing the one Link 1 that can attack directly, and then like a Zeus to go into. So if you happen to be stuck with a gruesome grave in the Samsara, you can do that. Um, we've got a couple level 10s in case you get more than one U-Bell on the field and don't know what to do with it, you need a monster. Um, the Typhon, which is just like, you, you want to play Typhon in this modern day and age. Almost any deck's going to want a Typhon. And a Chet's Insistent Chaos Angel, which you don't need to make with a tuner if you don't know. This is a synchro that can be made with any light or dark monsters. And it, uh, Phantom Evil Bell is a 9. We have 1s. If you're left with this on the field and you just want to get rid of it, you can make it into a Chaos Angel. So now that we have the deck... 
We just need to test it out. And I think I'm gonna start by just doing some test hands against the AI. Just trying to see if I can get familiar with the deck and learn any like big combos. How to make a big go first board. I wasn't really thinking about that as we were building, whether or not this would be go first or go second. It feels more like it's geared towards going second because you wanna be able to attack into everything. But unless you have Nightmare Pain, you won't be able to do that. You're kind of reliant on them attacking you. So it almost behooves you to like set up the board beforehand and then have Nightmare Pain so they're forced to attack into you. And then if you do that, you can set up like an Appalooza or a Phantom of Ubel that gives you several monster negates. If you could draw in more stuff, set Super Poly, you might have a variety of different things. So let me see what kind of go first boards I can build. Uh, and then I'll come back. All right, so after messing around with this for just a, just a few moments, I was easily able to find out like a one card combo that gets you a whole bunch of stuff. Should give you a good idea of the power level of the deck and also give us an idea of what we might need to remove. So let's go ahead and just activate Nightmare Throne. This lets you take a fiend and either add it to your hand or destroy it. And we are going to add Samsara D Lotus. And this is our normal summon. We're going to tribute it, and that'll allow us to summon one from the deck. Now, granted, you know, a lot of decks are going to have Ash, a lot of decks are going to have Called By. If they have any kind of negate for this, you might be screwed. But normally, you're going to have four other cards, and that's why they play a lot of the, uh, the Dark Beckoning Beast engine, because that's something that can create a whole lot of value before you even go into this. But yeah, let's go ahead. Spirit of Ubel. You want to summon this one because when it's summoned, it'll search your win condition card, the Nightmare Pain. Add it to hand, set it, I don't think it really matters either way. We'll get this, and then we can blow up our Spirit of Ubel to add another card from our deck to our hand. And we're going to take the uh, Gruesome Grave Squirmer. And this is something already I'm learning, like, yeah, you don't need this. As long as you can get any of these other cards, the, 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 the Geist Grinder Golem, not really needed. Maybe one if you had, like, other U-Bells in your hand or both of them. But we're just going to go for the Gruesome Grave Squirmer. And then because this was destroyed, it's going to trigger its own effect to summon a U-Bell. And this effect to summon a U-Bell that is one level higher. So we're going to get two monsters. We're going to get the Terror Incarnate, and we're going to immediately special summon it, ignoring the summoning condition. And then this is going to summon one of our U-Bells from the deck. And then because we control a fiend, we can special summon this. Let's go ahead and just put this out here. And then we can immediately destroy one monster. You don't have to. I'm not sure if I've seen other decks do this, but I feel like, you know, the best U Bell is the third tier one. And this is a way to get that out. So there's part one of your end board. And then we've got these two monsters. We really don't want to give them the option to attack into U Bell. We kind of just want this one. So we're going to go ahead and use these two, and we're going to make Cross Sheep. Nice little Link monster, Link 2, and it has a particular effect when you use a fusion. If you summon a fusion to the zone it points to, you can get a monster out of the graveyard. So we're going to shuffle back the Terror Incarnate and the U-Bell to get our Phantom of the U-Bell. And then that's going to trigger the Cross Sheep, and that's going to allow us to bring back the Samsara D Lotus. Bada bingo, bada bango. Now Grave Swarmer, you can use its effect, banish it from the graveyard, Summon a monster out of the graveyard. We'll get our Spirit of Ubel. The search is once per turn. But wouldn't you know, we got one, two, three, four. That's enough to make a three material Appalooza. Bada bingo. And I and I'm so I'm so used to summoning zero attack monsters in defense, but this really should be an attack. We we wanted them to, to have to go into one of these two. Although ideally the first monster effect they activate, you're gonna be using the uh, the Phantom of Ubel. Um, you could also potentially use this as material, not have this on the field, make something else, maybe get like an SP and an IP to go into the Appalooza. The one thing about this end board is that you've got like five monster negates and no way to stop spell traps. Like if they haven't evenly matched, if they have a, um, I guess Raigeki doesn't really hurt you because this is going to float and this is going to cause things to float. But this is, this is a pretty good setup from one card. If you have other cards where you can extend even further, you know, get another normal summon, get something else, you can make even more links and have a much more robust end board. Maybe even put some of those Ixies on there. So there's a good idea of where to start. And the question from there is, how does this change the, the, the deck we've been building? 
What have we learned from here? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and take these two out. I do still think we want to play to you, Bell, but you could probably move it down to one. The Grave Squirmer, I think, is good just because we're playing so many fiends. It's a special summon. We can get into more things. Um, but the Mature Chronicle, really not feeling that. I feel like you have to already have this in your opening hand in order to do anything. But it's not good enough that you want to play three of it just to be able to do that. And then I feel like we want a third Phantom of Ubel because one of the things I learned in testing is that summoning this is not once per turn. You could summon all three of these per turn. And whether you're using them as a synchro material or link material, it's nice to be able to just go one into the other by shuffling back stuff in the graveyard. The problem is, what do we remove from here? I'm not exactly sure. It pains me to get rid of fun tech cards like the uh, Assembled Nightingale. But of all the things we have here, this is probably the least useful. So we'll get that and we'll put one more U-Bell Phantom in here. And then we've got to think of one more tech card. And I mean, you know, if you're trying to make room for Maxi, this is a great place to put Maxi, because Lord knows this special summons a whole lot. I think now that I've played this though, I am starting to realize some of the flaws. Namely, you have to be able to resolve Nightmare Throne, you have to be able to resolve Nightmare Pain, and even Opening of the Spirit Gates, even though we haven't used it in our combo, um, knowing that this is something that you're going to be activating, these are all face-up cards you want to be activating, I think Ghost Ogre might be a pretty good tech card, because if you can stop them from getting something with the throne, like, or stop them from activating that effect, or you can get the Nightmare Pain off the field, that kind of removes a lot of their teeth, a lot of their ability to do anything. So we're gonna try that. I think that's good, at least in the mirror match. This has some applications outside of stuff. Uh, might potentially be good, probably not against Fire Kings. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Either way, now that I know that we can build stuff on an empty field, I think the next step is to try to take this against uh, one of the AIs. Uh, the AIs on YGO Omega are not great, but that's true of the AI that's on like Master Duel in general, you know? It doesn't matter whether it's official or unofficial, it's hard to find good co competitors that have like hand traps to use against you. But there is one pretty decent one that I think I'm gonna try out. All right, so we're loading up against the Sky Striker bot with a random card. Um, this is a bit outdated. It doesn't have like any of the new Sky Striker stuff and the AI still doesn't play well, but it does have Ash. It does have Imperm. It does have Max C. So this should give us some idea of, of what this deck can run into. Uh, let's start with opening the Spirit Gates and we got Ashed and that's our turn, unfortunately. <laughs> we open with two things to stop our opponent, but yeah, I could see this problem. Granted, if they attack, Spirit of the Ubel isn't entirely a brick. We do have Imperm, we do have Ghost Ogre, so maybe we can get out of this alive. Okay, they're going for the Sky Striker Ace, and they're going to get the Hornet Drones. Yeah, I think we just allow them to do that. We could stop them with a couple different ways, but of all the cards to add... Well, now I feel great shame. I could have just... <laughs> I should have impermed this. Uh, I guess we take less damage this way. And they had engage. Well, hot damn. Um, they do not have a ray in the graveyard. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and do the Spirit of Ubel. The Spirit! Add a card. Yeah, let's add Nightmare Pain. So they're going to attack. They're going to activate the effect. We cannot Ghost Ogre because it's in the damage step. Well, what did they send to the graveyard? They sent a Ray. Fuck. This AI is better than I thought. The Ghost Ogre not doing well. We're really getting punished for not hitting the, um, the Imperm on the, the Shizuku. Not the Shizuku, the fucking Maxi. Ooh. Um, okay, so we're just going to activate Nightmare Pain. And I don't think we're going to, well, no, we're going to activate Nightmare Throne. And we're going to get the Samsara D Lotus. 
This is still like an effect during the opponent's turn, so we can just like normal summon it. With the pain here that... Solemn warning. Well, you know what? Oh, we could open the spirit gates. Um, it'll give them one card. Do we want to give them one card? No. No, let's just go to battle. Eh. You take the 1500! And, yeah. We'll just end it there. What are they gonna do? They got nothing that can stop this. Fuck. <laughs> Not Widowmaker! Ruthless. I'm taking more damage than I want to. If it weren't for the fact that they activated so many um, upstart goblins, I might be in a little danger. Okay, we found a good um, ghost ogre target. And look, we got our monster back, chat. All right, so they haven't activated that. So let's go ahead and try this now. Opening of the spirit gates. Send that, summon back the Lotus. Um, activate the Lotus. Okay, we're getting farther than I thought. Let's get another Spirit of Ubel. Uh, let's go ahead and activate the trap. Why not? We'll just set it to the field. Then we can Nightmare Pain. We can blow this up. Okay, we get the Gruesome Grave Squirmer. And yeah, then we get to activate both of these. This is just like that combo we were doing originally. Special summon it? You know it, baby. Special summon you, Bell? You know it, baby. Okay, let's go ahead and activate the Squirmer. I want to get the biggest, scariest you, Bell. Terror Incarnate, meet the ultimate nightmare! And I think we just want to do maximum damage, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the cross sheep with these two. We're going to summon the Phantom of Ubel by shuffling back you and you. We're going to get this right here. We're going to use the cross sheep. We're going to get some Grave Squirmer. Sure. And then we're going to make SP. And we're just going to banish that back row, because I don't want to have to worry about it. It was just a mecha... Okay. And then it doesn't matter, because we're not attacking directly. We're just attacking into Shizuku. You take the damage! You take the damage! And then, you take the damage! And there you go. They don't even have to have a very big monster. You could just get enough zero attack monsters and ram into them over and over again. So a bit of a hiccup. You can see how this might be a little bricky. I can see how maybe you might want to play the uh, the the original U Bell at one. Either that or more of the grinder golems to to one brick your hand. Probably not. And yeah, this if if you you know you can imagine where if I had a hand that had like Samsara D Lotus and the Spirit Gates then this fiending out an ash means that we can then go on through our plays without being interrupted. You have so many things that search and do things. Granted, I didn't really learn what those combos are with the, uh, the spirit gates and the, um, the spirit beast or whatever its name is, the thing that gets you multiple normal summons. But that's something that I feel like, you know, you, you can't really learn because you're almost always going to get interrupted in some way. It's a hand trap format. You've got to get used to it. But I feel like I understand what the deck does, what its weaknesses are. Let's go back to the room screen. And yeah, I think that's about where I'm going to call it for now. You know, if I was building this in real life, if I was trying to make it for Master Duel, this is where I would start looking at other deck profiles, start asking friends or Discord members for uh, more suggestions. A lot of people in chat have been saying Unchained, and yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that at first, because even though they're fiends, they're zero attack, or they're not zero attack fiends, but they do have a whole lot of link monsters that give you more disruption options, ways to take out monsters, besides just negating their effects. 
Um, so there's definitely more to expand on here. But again, hopefully this gave you a good start, a good foundation. So if you want to build, you can jump off from here. And if you just want to know how to fight the deck, I think this gives you some pretty good ideas. Um, one thing that I learned from this in particular is just how important all these uh, spell traps are. Like, I was focusing so much on the monsters because so much of Yu-Gi-Oh! is monsters, but really without Nightmare Pain, it's very difficult for them to inflict any damage to you. And Nightmare Throne is so important, giving you all those hits, that um, it's something where I think if, if you wanted to combat this, the best idea might be to start actually playing some spell trap removal. Uh, the last couple years of Yu-Gi-Oh! spell traps have been so few and far between, so often they're chainable things like uh, impermanence, that it's not really worth it to play like a Twin Twisters or a Cosmic Cyclone. But against a deck like this, I think it might actually be worth it. Or if you're going second, you know, Lightning Storm could come back in. Heavy Storm might be useful. If you can wipe out all those spell traps, then the monsters are a little easier to deal with. At least from what I've seen. Who knows, maybe they can make some better monsters or whatever. But yeah, I think I'm gonna call it there. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like it. Let me know you want to see more of this content. You can also try commenting. You know, if there's other decks that you want to see, you can let me know down there. I do read those. If something's popular enough, I might take a look at it. If something's not popular, you can always join the Patreon at a really high level and, and request it. I might be able to do something for you there, depending on the archetype, or get some kind of content out. And you know, if nothing else, just subscribe. I make one of these a month. If you want to see more of them, I got other content too. It's pretty neat. There's also like the Twitch. Twitch is down in the description. Um, Kruger's here. He don't have any social media yet, yet. He's thinking about it. He's got an idea for a channel. Um, comment in the comments if you'd like to see Critter's channel. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Thank you to Twitch chat for helping me out. And thanks again to Cat Monarch for suggesting this. Uh, until next time, bye.